Hi, Cat's Cradle here. I'm baking bread right now because I woke up this morning to an article my husband had pulled up for me on the internet and it's a year old but he hadn't seen it before and I actually hadn't read it myself so I was interested to to see what it said and it's an article by Mike Adams uh, from naturalnews.com where he says a common ingredient in commercial bread is derived from human, human hair harvested in China and I had heard people talking about this and I'm like oh my gosh you know people just say the wildest craziest things and get people all stirred up and and I just kind of discounted it I thought that just can't and I would heard something about feathers or something I don't know so I decided really to sit down and read it and he says if you read the ingredient labels on a loaf of bread you will usually find an ingredient listed there is L cysteine L the letter L dash cysteine this is a non-essential amino acid added to many baked goods as a dough conditioner in order to speed up industrial processing it's usually not added directly to flour intended for home use but you're going to find it in commercial uh, breads such as pizza dough bread rolls pastries that kind of thing he says, while some L-cysteine is directly synthesized in laboratories, and in my research I found out that only about 10% is synthesized in laboratories, uh, mostly because it's very expensive. Uh, I'll tell you another reason in a minute. Most of it's extracted from sheep and abundant natural protein source, human hair. The hair is dissolved in acid, and L-cysteine is isolated through a chemical process, then packaged and shipped off to commercial bread producers. Besides human hair, other sources of L-cysteine include chicken feathers, duck feathers, cow horns, and petroleum products. Most of the hair used to make L-cysteine is gathered from the floors of barber shops and hair salons in China. Can you believe it? While the thought of eating dissolved hair might make some people uneasy, most Western customers ultimately, uh, Western consumers ultimately have no principled objection to doing so. And he goes to talk about that, on to talk about that a little bit and the problem for Muslims and Jews eating any kind of food that's derived from the human body. Anyway, fascinating. Then the next source is that I read was the Vegetarian Research Group blog. And they added another uh, source for this L-cysteine. You're not going to believe it. Hog hair. That is... I'm sorry, just grosses me out. And the reason they say that 90% of the uh, L-cysteine is natural is because the ones they make uh, chemically is too expensive. But th the interesting thing is the 90% that they put in your food, they can call that natural because it comes from a natural source. It's from hog hair and duck feathers and human hair. It is just crazy. Oh, and the people who eat natural, uh, they don't seem to be bothered by that so much. So let's go to the next source. The next source is Discovery Fit and Health Blogs. And I will just post uh, the link to all of these for you so that you can read them and see what I saw. It's just unbelievable. This, uh, this person says who wrote this, this is a frightening phenomenon, especially considering that if you asked most people how they felt about eating human hair, they would be disgusted. But in a way, it's positive because it reminds us that the only one we can trust when it comes to food safety is ourselves. Read every ingredient in the bread you buy. If you don't know what it is, look it up. I totally agree with that sentiment. You know, I should have known. I should have known. Uh, that this was probably true because one night on our Homestead Honey Hour show, I don't remember which one it was, but Noreen and somebody else started talking about food additives and how how uh, if they come from a natural source, it could be called natural. And we got in this whole discussion about, or they did in the chat room, about beaver anal glands being used in food additives for flavoring. So if you see 
castoreum on your food label that comes from beaver anal glands and it's used mostly in foods that are flavored with vanilla and foods foods that are flavor have a vanilla flavor and foods that have a raspberry flavor it's used extensively in ice cream so you might want to look on the label and see if it cast, says castoreum because your little beaver friend contributed to that um uh, the last article on my link is to a one one called clean food and when you get to the end of that link I mean when you get to the end to the bottom of that picture and there's just a little bit written down there click on uh, via Peoria story that's where you'll get more information and she talks about this beaver gland thing this is a doctor who is uh, a board certified board certified in obstetrics gynecology and uh, integrative holistic medicine and she talks about all the ways that you can eat clean food and that that's an interesting read for you so I'll post all those links below really you know it it just makes me want to not buy anything at the grocery store certainly not bread and I was so tempted because prepper a and pallet and prepper were headed out to the city and I almost said because I'm making I have so many tomatoes I'm making my fresh tomato sauce on pasta for supper tonight and we love to have French bread with that and I almost said pick me up a loaf of French bread and then I remembered reading this story this morning I thought you know what I'm gonna make my own French bread that I know doesn't have any garbage in it certainly not gonna have any human hair that was swept off of a a beauty shop floor in China or cut off somebody's hair in India I I'm telling you folks really if you want your food to be safe grow it yourself make it yourself or get it from a trusted source it's the only way to be sure you cannot trust anything that is prepared commercially unless you have personal first-hand knowledge of how that company runs their business hope this helps you cats cradle